Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna talk about high blood pressure in pregnancy. I've gotten so many questions from you all and it's because high blood pressure, preeclampsia, gestational hypertension, is becoming more and more common or we're seeing it much much more especially in the last 10 years so i thought what a great idea to sit down and talk about what's the big concern with high blood pressure in pregnancy now if you guys want a more detailed video specifically on preeclampsia gestational hypertension the ins and outs of it delivery kind of stuff i do have a prior older video from a couple years ago where i go into all of that Today, I just really want to break it down and talk about why we're worried about it and why it occurs in some pregnancies and why some people don't get or develop preclaims. So as always, we're going to start with some background information. I'll explain exactly what blood pressure is and then expected changes that we see with blood pressure in pregnancy. And then we'll get into complications like gestational hypertension and preeclampsia. I myself developed preeclampsia with my first pregnancy, so it's definitely something I've lived through firsthand and as an OBGYN, obviously had more insight throughout the pregnancy and stuff to look out for. I hope by sharing my experience and my knowledge, this helps you and maybe even provides you a peace of mind if you're currently going through or experiencing high blood pressure in your pregnancy. When we talk about blood pressure, we're actually measuring how hard your blood is pumping throughout your vessel. It causes a lot of changes through our bodies, as we know, but it can actually cause a lot of changes with your cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system includes your heart and all of the blood vessels, arteries, veins that supply blood to all of your organs, your extremities, and obviously a very, very important part of our survival. So what kind of changes can we see with the cardiovascular system in pregnancy? Your heart is actually working harder when you become pregnant, and we see these changes as early as the first trimester. So our heart is working harder and our vessels, so our arteries and our veins, relax more when we're pregnant. All of these changes are normal and we expect them during pregnancy. They're actually necessary so that our body is able to supply extra nutrients and blood to the growing fetus. So let's break it down. With blood pressure, we see two numbers. You're going to see the top number, which is the systolic number, and the bottom number, which is called diastolic. So that top number, the systolic number is going to measure the pressure of the blood against the vessels when your heart is pumping. So the heart contracts, pumps out blood, and that's the pressure that we measure. The diastolic number or the bottom number is going to measure the pressure when the heart relaxes. Uncomplicated pregnancy, your blood pressure actually decreases up until the third trimester. At the first and second trimester, it's normal to see a decrease in blood pressure from your non-pregnant state. Usually around 28 weeks, which is the start of the third trimester, we see your blood pressure kind of go back to your pre-pregnancy state, and that's normal. By the time you're full term, so anywhere between 37 and 40 weeks, your blood pressure should go back exactly to what your blood pressure typically ran at before you got pregnant. As I mentioned at the start of the video, there's two conditions that can develop in pregnancy. One is called gestational hypertension, and the second one is called preeclampsia. Some people that already have a diagnosis of high blood pressure before they get pregnant. This is what's called, at least in OB pregnancy world, it's called chronic hypertension, meaning that patient or that person already carries a diagnosis of high blood pressure. Maybe they're already taking medication for high blood pressure prior to becoming pregnant. We start talking about conditions such as gestational hypertension and preeclampsia. This is solely seen in pregnancy and it's seen after 20 weeks. If someone were to have high blood pressure prior to 20 weeks gestation, this is called chronic hypertension, or like I said, someone who already probably carried a diagnosis of high blood pressure before pregnancy. When we see high blood pressure after 20 weeks, then that's something that's abnormal with the pregnancy. Let's say someone is after 20 weeks, and while they're getting their regular prenatal visits, we start to notice that their blood pressure after 20 weeks now is reading more around 140 over 90. 
Now say at multiple visits or you're checking your blood pressure at home and you're consistently getting blood pressures that are over 140 over 90, then you meet the diagnosis of gestational hypertension. Gestational hypertension, you don't see any other organs affected at this time. All you see is that increase in blood pressure. When other organs start to get affected, meaning we see lab work changes with liver function, with kidney function, then you meet the diagnosis of preeclampsia. So the biggest difference between gestational hypertension and preeclampsia is preeclampsia, it's more serious because other organs are now starting to get affected. So why do we even care about gestational hypertension if nothing else is going on? No other organs are being affected, your liver is still working normally, kidney function is still normal, you don't really have symptoms of high blood pressure, so you're not getting headaches, you're not getting changes to your vision. Why, do, why even bother about it? That's because we know that hypertension in and of itself causes extra stress to your body. If we were to leave gestational hypertension untreated or uh, unaware of it and we're not looking for it, it could ultimately develop into preeclampsia, which could then lead into some pretty serious complications. Complications could lead to kidney failure, a stroke, even a heart attack. Patients with gestational hypertension are at an increased risk of preterm birth or having a baby born before 37 weeks. And that's because with the high blood pressure, you now have a decreased flow of blood to your baby. So it could lead to growth restriction, meaning the baby's growing smaller and not getting all the appropriate nutrients that your baby needs. Other complications that we can see with gestational hypertension is a condition called a placental abruption, meaning again, we have a disruption in the blood flow throughout the placenta, and that could cause the placenta to start to detach from the uterus, which again is going to cause a lot of issues with the pregnancy, the baby's not getting appropriate blood flow, and ultimately it could lead to an emergency C-section. And checking your blood pressure throughout the pregnancy is pretty important and why we do it at every single visit with your medical provider. Let's talk about preeclampsia. For with preeclampsia, we see what's called end organ damage or other organs getting affected. The two most common organs that we see are gonna be your liver, which is up here on your right side, and your kidneys. With preeclampsia, we start to see even higher blood pressure. And typically during pregnancy, that means a blood pressure that's higher of 160 over 110. Now this is pretty significant elevated blood pressure, even for someone who's not pregnant. So to see this number so high in pregnancy, you tend to worry because obviously you have a growing baby that you also need to take care of. So some of the symptoms you may experience with preeclampsia are gonna be signs and symptoms of high blood pressure. Specifically in pregnancy, we see visual changes, meaning with your eyesight, you start to see floaters or almost like twinkling lights in your vision. Sometimes you may experience this even outside of pregnancy if you like are laying down and you sit up really fast and you kind of get that like woo feeling and you see kind of sparkles in your eyes. Patients with preeclampsia can experience this just normally or resting or just sitting down, which is not normal. Their symptoms include a severe headache. Typically with preeclampsia, we see frontal headaches. So a headache that affects the front part of your forehead or even almost like behind your face. And it could be that you take a Tylenol, you try to go to sleep, you drink water, kind of all the remedies that we try to get rid of a headache. But with preeclampsia, that headache does not go away. Things you may experience are right upper quadrant pain, so right where your liver is, or even kind of in the middle of your belly, you might start you might start to experience sharp pain, and that's because with high blood pressure, it can cause inflammation of your liver. So some patients then experience kind of a sharp, dull ache right where your liver is. Ultimately, for kidney function, we see that patients with preeclampsia, their kidney function decreases, so we start to see more protein being excreted out into the kidneys because the kidneys aren't able to work appropriately and filter things like they normally would. When we start talking about really high blood pressure, so higher than 160 over 110, although I've seen this even when blood pressure is in the 160s, but serious complications of preeclampsia are gonna be things like seizures. So the blood pressure gets so high and the patient becomes so sick that the mother starts to have a seizure, which 
As you can imagine, seizures in pregnancy are very dangerous to the fetus. So that is something that we definitely want to avoid. Other complications could be things like stroke, which we know stroke is very scary outside of pregnancy. So in pregnancy, when you're dealing with two patients, the mom and the baby, you worry again of severe complications, risk for developing these complications. These are going to be patients that already have risk factors for the development of high blood pressure in pregnancy. One, which is gonna be very obvious, is someone who has high blood pressure outside of pregnancy, they're at an increased risk of developing preeclampsia because even before they were pregnant, they already have the high blood pressure. So if you're someone that has high blood pressure and you're wanting to get pregnant, this is something that you want to discuss with your OBGYN and your primary care doctor who's treating your high blood pressure so that we can make sure that we optimize your health so that you have the best pregnancy possible. One other conditions could put you at risk. This is gonna be any sort of condition that is going to affect your cardiovascular health or your blood vessels. Things like having diabetes, whether that's type one diabetes or type two diabetes prior to becoming pregnant, it's gonna put you at an increased risk of developing high blood pressure in pregnancy because we know that diabetes affects the blood vessels. Other conditions are gonna be like kidney disease. Say you already have a kidney disease, like some types of lupus, for example, can affect kidney function. So you want to make sure that you have your lupus or any other sort of kidney disease you may carry. You wanna make sure you have these conditions optimized and that you're treated very well for them before becoming pregnant. Another interesting thing is that when we look at preeclampsia as a whole, we see that preeclampsia is actually affecting women who are teenagers and over the age of 35, more so than the women who are in between those ages. We already know that women over the age of 35 are more likely to develop chronic conditions. So for example, when you compare a 25 year old to a 40 year old, at age 40, we're more likely to develop high blood pressure, I'm talking outside of pregnancy, or things like diabetes because we're a little bit older, where someone who's 25 maybe doesn't carry those risk factors. And why do teenagers tend to develop more high blood pressure issues in pregnancy? That's because, again, when they're younger, their body isn't necessarily ready or mature enough to handle the stress of pregnancy, which is why we see a higher incidence in that age group. So what happens if you do develop preeclampsia or gestational hypertension throughout your pregnancy? Do you have to do anything after you deliver? Or what should you do to improve your health so that this doesn't happen again with another pregnancy? Now this is kind of where I am because I did develop preeclampsia with my first pregnancy. Now the day of my C-section is kind of when we caught it, maybe even the day before because my blood pressure the day before the C-section was in the 140s over 90s. And then the day of the C-section, it was consistently at greater than 160 over 110. And we did see some changes in my blood work, meaning my liver enzymes were slightly elevated and I did have, have increased protein in my urine. So I met the diagnosis of preeclampsia. So we do know that women that develop these high blood pressures in pregnancies, we actually see that it can affect their health long-term outside of pregnancy. So for most women after you deliver, because the treatment for preeclampsia is delivery, we see that the blood pressure after about four to six weeks from the delivery, we see that your blood pressure normalizes and goes back to your baseline pre-pregnancy. Now that may not be the case for everyone, which is why it's important to have follow-up visits. If you have preeclampsia, we typically like to see patients back in the office within a week from delivery to continue to monitor their blood work and blood pressure. And then of course, at the postpartum visit, which is usually four to six weeks after delivery. If the blood pressure is still elevated at that point, it may be a good idea to either start medication or to see your primary care provider to do additional testing or maybe a trial of a medication to see if we can get your blood pressure normalized. Women who have gestational hypertension and preeclampsia during their pregnancy are at an increased risk of developing heart disease or kidney disease later on in life. 
you want to make sure and have established care with a primary care physician and let them know this complication that you had in pregnancy because you definitely want to keep an eye on things and at your yearly visits you want to make sure you're checking blood work and your blood pressure so that we can catch it early and start treatment early if this is something that's going to affect your cardiovascular health in the future. It's important that you're not only working with an OBGYN, but also a primary care physician and that they're both communicating with, you, with each other so that we can provide the best care for you. I think that brings me to the end of the video. I hope I did a good job of explaining these conditions to you and why it's important to always treat and manage because this is not only going to potentially affect your health, but also the health of your baby and your health after you deliver have any additional questions please let me know in the comments down below and remember that if you want even more details on preeclampsia or gestational hypertension i'll leave that video linked down below as well i also have another video where we talk about things that we can do to reduce our risk so like taking a low dose baby aspirin throughout the pregnancy i'll leave that linked down below as well hope you have a good rest of your day and let me know if there's any other topics you would like me to cover whether that's in pregnancy or women's health or any other topic in between. Love you guys. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.